It's so fucking weird. <laughs> Carl and Brendan here from Games, Brains and Headbang Life, GBH Bowl at Com for short. And you know what time it is? It's reaction time. Checking out Undying by Dragon Corpse, who, am I correct in the album's out now or is it coming out? No, no, the album is out. The album came out earlier in February. Ah, that uh, was it. This year. So yeah, 10th of February via Shattered Earth Records. So I don't know this band. Uh, I really don't. I heard a brief snippet as we were setting the video up. So I've got a inkling in what direction we're heading at least based off the first two seconds of the track but mm. hey it could be completely different now but it also features uh two people Jens atomic and stefan gorski prins um i guess it's up to you to elaborate on this one well i don't know who they are but you <laughs> <laughs> um i don't like so i mean obviously <clears throat> i guess even even outside of the two milliseconds glimpse that you've got when you hear see yep. a band and they're called dragon corpse the album's name is the dracas saga um, the album has a picture of a dragon on it, you know, uh -huh. so it obviously leads you down a certain route. Now, this band are oh, one of the, uh, this album, sorry, um, is a 10 out of 10 for me this year, got it yep. earlier in the year. And it blew me away because it did something that I, when I read it, I thought, I'm going to hate this. This doesn't sound like it's going to work. And it is, uh, it combines two genres. And those yeah. two genres are, of course, power metal uh -huh. and, uh, Deathcore. So yeah. you're talking Lorna Shore sort of level Deathcore. Really? Power metal. Now that doesn't sound like it's going to work on paper. And when I first listened to this album, it took maybe a minute, minute and a half of the first song where my mind was, you know, it's mad how quickly we conditioned we can become. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I didn't expect those two things to go together. So therefore it didn't. And when I heard it, I was like, oh, I don't know what's, what's happening here. I'm all confused. And then it sort of synchronized and I was like, Fuck me, this is brilliant. So anyway, look, it's got a lot of good songs on the album. Undying is is it is a story, it is a concept as you expect within Power Metal, right. you know. Um, this is nearing the end of the album. There's a lot of like interludes, instrumental interludes in the album as well. So <clears throat> this to me is my favorite song of the album. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, but I'm interested, I suppose, as much as anything else, to see how you feel that blend of genres comes comes in you know how, how it how it kind of works for you or if okay i mean you know genre blending genre bending is is bread and butter these days it doesn't even feel like that much of a big deal admittedly power metal and lorna shaw style deathcore is make does make me go huh okay yeah, quite then, opposite ends of the, at some scale somewhere isn't it you know yeah but lorna shaw themselves proved last year you know they can do things with deathcore i will add that i did quickly google who the guests were so jens tomic is a vocalist in the band's confusing paradise and breach the surface from what i can see whereas stefan gorski prince appears to be effectively just a vocalist that you may or may not guest on many many different things uh you know you go to his band camp and you know he's got things like false fire by black tongue the gallus by despondent finis omnium ignorantium by vulvedonia um he also appeared actually on a christmas ep we covered called slashing through the snow by various artists but if you remember us doing a track, mm -hmm. track on that uh he's also appeared on anal trump that makes me smart yes that is anal trump you had that corrected. Uh, so there's been lots and lots of stuff on that. So that's the two uh, guests. Um, yeah, we shall uh, uh, see how it works. All right, in three, two, one, go. Those drums right now. Yeah, the drums and him, the drums and that both the screen. What? Oh, 
So fucking weird. How about all that? <laughs> yeah, how about how about all of that, as you say? Um, how about all of that? That's uh it's a kitchen sink approach to a metal song, isn't it? Yep. Um yeah, I, I can't believe it's only four minutes. Uh yeah, about four, four, well, four eleven officially, but it kind of passes out about the four minute mark with that just boom and then off we go. Why not? Why not end it that fucking way? Um, yeah, it's amazing that it's so cohesive. I think that's what I'm mostly impressed by is that it didn't, uh, I never felt like at any stage it was jarring. I made a couple of faces when it was a switching in tone, but that's only because I was unfamiliar mm. with the expectation of what was coming. I think have with a few more listens and certainly probably a grander album view, it all, it wouldn't be as so shocking, but like, okay, this is cool. This is interesting because it all flows quite nicely, but that cohesiveness on a first listen, a first time listen is highly, highly impressive. You almost, this is a track you have to break apart. I mean, there's so many different vocal styles going on here. Obviously let's start with the most prominent one, which is the highs, the absolute screaming highs. I almost suspect that's near, not quite, but it's near your tolerance level, but not there yet because it's kind of done with a bit more power in the back rather than being screechy, so to speak. It's not screeching, it's high singing. So I can kind yeah. of see why you get along with that. But that same clean vocalist also sings at a much lower tone. In fact, there's a point about, I think it was around a three minute mark and it wasn't keeping count, where it's just his vocals. I can actually remember this, the lyrical part. It's the part where it's... Um, your sense of pride is just a lie. It's so uh, intangible. Yeah. Betray the secrets. I covet. And the whole, that section there, what I thought his voice sounded immense. That's smooth, particularly as well with the symphonic melody you've kind of got in the background of that. That is an immense moment in there. That's one vocalist. Then you have the more aggressive death metal style, the one that's kind of old school death and all that. It's crunchy. It's heavy. It's nasty. It's initially... What I was worried about, and thankfully they didn't do, I, I thought they were going to trade because that's what they do at first. They trade. And I was like, oh, that's a bit, come on, man. Like, that's a bit yeah. lazy, just trade. But he don't actually. Uh, ends up doubling up. He The death metal vocals are in the background. You can hear them. You can clearly pick them out, but they're not dominating anymore. Yeah, they kind that's of cool. flop, don't they? Like Yes. That's immense there. And then you have the scratchier, really deathcore style leading as well as he pointed out during the video to the very squealy very pig 
guttural noises and elements like that. That might be the only one I'm not sure if worked quite as well, but it wasn't, I don't really, I don't really mean that. I don't really have a negative. I'm looking for a reason to be like, well, maybe that one could have been done without, but I'm like, well, what, what would you have replaced it with? More death metal? It's the same fucking thing, effectively. It's still yeah. got a real nasty heaviness and it just certainly perked your ears up, which is never a bad thing. If you're going to notice something and pick it out for that reason, I could see it being a thing of contention because I know a lot of people really dislike that style of vocals and that's totally cool. But when it's, but it's not predominant, it's not predominant aspect of the song. It's too much else going on elsewhere. But that doesn't, I go back to that kitchen sink thing. It doesn't mean, although I'm saying they throw this kitchen sink at it, it didn't feel like it was messy at any stage. And I don't know if that's because of the structured instrumentation, because that's the kind of thing you end up not forgetting about, but missing, but you stop paying mm. attention to as much because there's so much going on vocally and you listen to the lyrics when you can understand them. You can't read them along with it. But there's some really incredible instrumentation. And I'm not just talking about the symphonic elements and all that, but you can pick out good riffs. You can pick out any, um, nice stylish leads and stuff like that. Obviously, the predominant, dominant instrument are those drums. And they are fucking insane. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was a drum machine. But I suspect it isn't. It isn't. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just one of those really, really talent. And that fits. Weirdly enough, it even fits. That speed and heaviness and forcefulness even fit when it's leaning towards the more power aspect too, which is really fucking odd. Because that's I think that's work. the thing. Like, like when you know we talk about the genre blending and genre mixing, like obviously naturally our focus goes to the vocal style. You know, that's a mm. natural thing to do because that's the bit that's in your face, in your ears, right? But it's also genre genre blending in terms of like um, you have power metal vocal soaring vocals over blast beat style yeah. death metal drums and vice versa you have a point where he's doing the death metal vocals and it's just a violin yeah <laughs> and that also is like it's like it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's an oddity in that like your brain isn't conditioned that way it doesn't quite sink but at the same time you come you're going to come out of this with like a i i, I feel like it's probably going to be quite a marmite sort of band like in a way that some people will listen to that and go <clears throat> no, too much, too much. I oh, don't get it. Yeah, oh, me. And other people are going to be intrigued and go, okay, there's something to this. I, I quite, you know, I got, I get it a little bit. You know, I'm interested. I think that's you've nailed it there. I think Marmite is the right word. I can enjoy this because it's got all elements, elements I want. You are, we are, we have to. St- genre blending like i said it's 10 a penny these days but not everybody does it really really well and what i mean by that is the flow and uh, go back to that that that, that cohesiveness uh, moving from one to the other but on the way because it's so different you have to stop and do a little bit of a little, little melody here because you can't make it flow properly you need something to bridge it basically and elements like that it's really notable there's none of that here because when it does change tone it seems like it's done in tribute to the overall package like it was planned that it was set there was no issue about creating bridges between stars and stuff like that because as rightly pointed out again and again a lot of the bridging comes from those fucking blast beat style drums mm, yeah. and elements like that so it really is the case i've had a look it's the last track on the album which i find stunning in itself that this is how they choose particularly with that final tone that almost feels like it's designed to go out and then into something else um but, but actually, you know, when the song started, obviously it goes straight in. Yeah. Um, because the way that the album is laid out, it's song, instrumental, song, instrumental, song, instrumental. So actually there's an instrumental that leads then straight into this song, which is right. why it comes in so so straight from the off. That's why it's being called an EP. I was puzzled as to why in nine tracks and people are calling it one an those, EP. But I... One of those things, isn't it? Like, got, yeah. the PR people called it an album. I think the band in the bio called it an album then right people call it an ep people people have got confused now because you get an ep that's got seven tracks on it and it's 45 minutes long yeah i get an album that's got 20 tracks on it and it's 27 minutes long Mm. and then i get a single with six tracks on it and you're just like what the fuck (laughs) nobody knows anymore Just but you release. are right. You are right. Broken apart with like interlude one, Sturm, interlude two, Nox Abereth, interlude three, Moragale, and interlude four, Dracoth. Dracoth, which is called, of course, the Dracoth saga. I did really like it. I really, it's not rare, but it is nice. It's always nice for me to get a song where I'm on, not, not on the fence, but where I'm generally like, yeah, I, I would need to listen to that a couple more times before I could 
confidently turn around and say, I hate it or I love it. It's not like I'm sitting on the fence when I say I'm not sure about it because I do think all the elements work so nicely that I will definitely remember this track. This isn't going to be one you don't notice or um, that slips out of my mind, should I say. But I guess I want to know in context as well and the rest of the freaking album or EP or whatever it is, how that all works, what other ideas they've got or if it is all kind of similar to this. So I guess you can... No, there's other me. ideas in this. Not always good. There is, there is, um, when you talked about, um, some high pitched vocals getting to the bar, there is a song in particular where just for a short period they do cross my line, <laughs> right? But it, they come back quickly after it, which is why I was like, uh, oh, it doesn't really matter in the context of the song, but I still remember it, but like, very, I can hear it now in my head. And I'm like, oh, it was too high, come back down. <laughs> oh, no, what are you doing well- up there? I'm glad he didn't, yeah, he didn't break you in this, but there you go. Um, that's a cool track. That is Undying by Dragon Course featuring Jens Tomic and Stefan Gorski Prinz. You've got any thoughts on it? Are you off the fence, hating, loving it? You know what to do. Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, Consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?